Tennessee, <laughs> Tennessee football coach Josh Heibel with us at the table at SEC Media Days. Brentwood Hearing Center dot com uh, presenting these broadcasts. Brent Doherty, Don Davenport, Ron Slay, mm. and Josh Heibel. Coach, what's up? How are you? I'm doing great. How's your day been? Oh, great, 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 great. <laughs> I, I'm curious, like going into the first one of these compared with going into this one was. There a difference in preparation now that you kind of knew what it was? I don't know if there's a difference in preparation. There's a difference in understanding what uh, what the day is actually yeah. going to look like, and, and it had been through this different conferences. But, yeah, uh, this is a, a bigger, better beast than uh, than the rest of them. So, what's the message? Like, what's your talking point today that you want to get out there? I don't know if I have one talking point. I think this is a great celebration of this conference. It's a great celebration of the positive energy that's uh, throughout Vol Nation, throughout our athletic uh, administration, just what's going on uh, on campus. Uh, I don't know if there's been a better time as far as excitement and expectations and, and uh, positive things happening in, in UT athletics. And and uh, then we get a chance to, to have three great individuals up here that you know get to talk about what's going on inside of our program and, and who they are and their stories and uh, get a chance to you know, talk about what's been happening inside of uh, Tennessee football. It's interesting too, just, you know, being in Tennessee and just feeling the excitement around your program right now from Tennessee fans that we haven't felt in, in quite a while. I'm curious though, what the difference that is in the reaction that you're seeing when it comes to recruiting, when it comes to just having conversations out in Knoxville, reaction from fans, what do you see? Yeah, it's, it's so dramatically different. Yeah. <laughs> it was a year ago, and, and even during the course of last season, I thought we finished really strong in recruiting a year ago. That's because people, you know, had some proof in the pudding. Uh, they could see what the culture was going to look like, how we were going to play, and uh, uh, that's certainly true. Uh, it's springboarded into to how we're able to recruit right now. Um, you know, it's our job, my job, to create the best culture in college football, uh, to allow our, our players to have the best player experience that they can and really all in, in all of college football, and then uh, have uh, an environment where we enjoy and have fun competing uh, with each other and against each other every single day. And, you know, that's the best recruiting tool that we have right now is when we get recruits on campus and they get a chance to talk and be around our players, yeah. they know that like the experience that they're having with our coaches and staff during the recruiting process that it ain't just recruiting it's like that's how you're going to live every single day and uh, i'm really proud of, of what we've done inside of our culture uh, excited about the growth uh, from uh, from our football team uh, you use the word fun and that's what we get like talking to the players coming through here and, and you can feel that and see it how much fun are you having? Because I know you, you're you like businessman, all business, but how much fun are you having? I'm really not all business. I, <laughs> oh, I, I, oh I, just I, with I, us, I, right? I might portray that uh, <laughs> nobody has more fun when they get on the grass or in any competitive arena than me. And uh, I love being with our players. The best part of the day is when they walk into the building, man. When mm -hmm. I get a chance to be with our players, there's nothing better than that. I can't wait to get to training camp. Like, yeah. cannot wait. It's like – for guys that have been through training camp, right, like it's hard, you know what I mean, but there's no class. It's football all day long. You're with the people that you love being with all yeah. day, every day. Like it's one of the great times of the year and uh, excited about that. And, and uh, you know, we try to create a way to have fun. Like we got highly competitive guys. Let's create competitive times and environments in everything that we're doing. And, and uh, uh, I love, you know, the way our guys compete. Tennessee football coach Josh Heupel with us on 3HL. Well, coach, you know what time it is. It's Hello. time to go in the boom, boom, room. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there He's we like go. a vet in the yeah, room. He is, man. Yeah. Yeah. And see, I thought I was running the boom, boom, room today. <laughs> I, guess I, what? Tried, I tried before we got on air. Uh -oh. He didn't give me the keys. No, the car, no, no, man. no, 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 no. But, well, you know, we're going to have a good time, man. So, let me go on and, you know, preface it by giving you the rules. Now, when you go in the boom, boom, room, you already know you done been here. The door locked behind you. Got to tell everything the best of your ability to the truth. Yeah. You yep. know what I mean? You know who I am. You know I'm the judge, the bailiff, the jury, everything yep. else that goes with Can it. Can I fake a cramp, though, and, and get out of It's going to be tough. It. It's going to be tough, but I like that part because that's, uh, that's the truth. Quarterback. That's the truth. That's the truth. Quarterback. The truth. Faking cramps. Savage. Savage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, yeah, you, you fake that, it slows down the offense. You know what I'm you saying? Know, it slow down us yeah. getting in. That's yeah. all. But you agree to these terms. Yeah, let's go. All right, lock the door. Here we go. Coach Josh Heupel is coming into the Boom Boom Room. The Boom Boom Room brought to you by Low T Center. Now we're going to leave the coach. Talk at the door. We are walking in here right now, man. You are hype. Hype is in the boom, boom room. Let me first and foremost say one thing that I love about these events, you get to strip down players 
and when they come in the boom boom room, get to talk to them about other things outside of football. So you get to learn <laughs> life lessons and everything. So I want to ask you. Yeah. I want to ask you. Getting recruited, when you got recruited. Yeah. When they walked in your living Boy, room. Boy, is it so different now. <laughs> and then it was. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so give me, give, paint a picture for me what it was like being recruited when you were a, a, a young man. Most of the recruiters got off the plane and then went right back on the plane. It was so cold. <laughs> we had one recruiter that had to be like, you had up there in Aberdeen. South Dakota. Yeah. yeah, Aberdeen. In December and January, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. there's a plug-in with your battery that's hanging outside the hood of your car yeah, yeah. he had no idea what that was for hey, I have when he, no idea. yeah i know but when you got plugging in at night so that it starts the next morning yeah. he's like man i don't know if i need to be here i gotta get out of here <laughs> but he knew i was tough for yeah that, yeah, for that yeah. Reason. yeah so a lot of character being built right. then wow. yeah so now compared to now some of these kids you do a great job of creating relationships you know what i'm saying when i first got up there and saw the orange and white game you could feel the different type of energy the family type of atmosphere that was going on what do you do now when you walk into a, a home, a living room? Now, I, I, you got me. You coming to recruit me. Yeah. You got me. I'm, I'm the oldest of 13. I got my mama there, single parent home, my grandmama there. Yeah. You know what I mean? We probably got some, some in there cooking on the, uh, in the kitchen. We probably get you some noodles. We ain't got much to get, you know what I mean? So That's we get right. some noodles, you know, some ramen noodles. They just like to say ramen. It's ramen. It's ramen. It's ramen. It's ramen. It's ramen. It's come ramen. on, hype. It's they, ramen. Come on, this is the boom, boom, boom. These are my rules. Yeah, but I, <laughs> no, get, to be, I get to be real. Okay. Right? <laughs> This is going to be the only time I'm going to say, okay, we got some ramen noodles in there cooking. <laughs> there you go. We're going to go with chicken <laughs> you, and the beef. That's what you're going to pick. You sit down on the couch. You're talking to my parents, man. What are you going to sell me on? You know what's crazy is that most of the recruiting now, like you don't, you're not selling once you get in the house. Like mm -hmm. You've already had them on campus like a handful of times. Right. The, the recruiting cycle is so different right. than it used to be. Right. But what are we going to sell, man? We, we sell personal and professional development, like mm -hmm. the opportunity to grow as a human being and yeah. like the realness of what it's going to look like inside of our building. Like mm -hmm. what are your goals, dreams, and aspirations? How does Tennessee – football, non-football, but the University of Tennessee help you go achieve those goals and dreams and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and how do you fit into the culture and, and uh, you know to me those are, are unbelievable opportunities to sell right Love like that. they come to game day like they've yeah. all come to game day yeah like that sells itself <laughs> yeah, that's it college athletics as good as it gets Without anywhere question. in the country there is nothing like it yeah as a competitor in the league mm -hmm. <clears throat> when I came it, it's one of two or three spots that I've ever gone out early for warm-ups. Mm. But driving up, seeing Vol Navy, yep. <clears throat> driving into that stadium, I was like, I'm going to go check it out. Yeah, I got the experience. There ain't nothing yeah. better, man. <laughs> and all. now getting a chance. And I w I'm going to be honest. Yeah, because right? you, you ain't got no I'm choice. A, I was a skeptic of Vol Walk. I, <laughs> like, it like, can't what? really – it can't There have been really, other coaches that have said that, yeah. I, it can't really be like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, there, the there is nothing <laughs> – Nothing like it. And I can't tell you what my son said as yeah. he's walking by. <laughs> she was all the way through. Yeah, man. It's yeah, awesome. It's serious. Yeah. Okay, now let me ask you this. Let's get away from the coach. Let's get away from the competitor. Let's get away from all of that. Let's get away from the team. You got two days. We got two days. We're going to snap our finger. You can take me anywhere with you. Where would you like to go anywhere in the world? We're going to have a good time. Yeah, we're going to have a good – it's just me and I, you. I'm we got 48 over, I'm hours. Going, I'm going overseas. We're getting on your jet. Hey. You're going overseas. <laughs> you can snap your finger. We got a jet right, in the boom, boom, right, boom. That's right. That's I like right. that. Yep. I mean, we're going Italy and Greece, man. Checking oh, it out. Oh. Let's go. See, he yes. knows my stomping grounds. You yes. know what I mean? Yes, hey, yes, we're going to have does. a good time over there. It's research. Yeah, you better know it. So, all right, last thing. Josh Heupel, the hype train. When them fans are going bananas and you coming out of there, Running out the tee, you got the lights going crazy. You got the you got the fireworks. Well, let me on. tell you, when the lights yeah. go off and it's, it's all orange, yeah, it's serious. It's serious. That, it's gave, that, that, that is sweet. That, that Ole Miss pregame <coughs> thing man, was unbelievable. I, I did everything in my so power not to run Miss down on the field because <laughs> I didn't want to be put out the game. But you know, I probably would talk to somebody. But this is what I'm asking you: Have you ever ran through there with the energy? I mean, it's it's going, and said, "Hey, man, you can't trip and fall." Did you ever think you would trip and fall going th running through the tee? Boy, I've never thought that way <laughs> okay. ever in my life. <laughs> and now, <laughs> and now, thanks, Slay. No, I know because yeah, guess what? They play Ball State. He's this, gonna be like, Damn, this was Slay. <laughs> this was my fear. Like <laughs> when I was a player, they let us go through the tee one time, and I was all the whole time saying, "Hey, man, what if somebody fall? 
<laughs> and a player, when I bat, I ain't gonna say the name. When I basketball player, he, he slipped. Played, he slipped and he fell. wasn't ready for all he, that. He wasn't ready. It was too much energy for him. Yeah. You he couldn't handle saying? twenty-one thousand. No, nah, uh, so we <laughs> take <laughs> we, <laughs> we take a light on you, man. We take a light on you, hyper. Let me ask you this: two-minute drill, going down the field. You start at the ten-yard line. Okay. Got to win this game. Yeah. Got to go score a touchdown. You're looking at your team. Yeah. You got young hype right there. National he, championship hype. Yeah, he's running the offense. He got he, he running that? offense. Uh, okay. And you got Hendon right there. Yeah. Which one are you telling? Hey man, go win us this game. Hendon Hooker. No Without doubt. question. Yeah. Why? He's got better coaching. I, oh my gosh, you just nailed that. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I unlocked the door, man. Let the hype train out the boom boom room. Josh Heupel, Tennessee football coach, <laughs> with us on 3HL. Uh, t- talking about that yeah, little scenario. So Cedric Tillman, we had at the table. What what a fascinating <laughs> guy. And w- when you look at his trajectory, he told us, you know, he didn't have a scholarship offer two days before signing day. And now, you know, he's the leading receiver coming back in the Southeastern Conference. Caught eight balls going into the season in his career. What was different for him? What what led to that transformation? We uh, we went back and, and watched his junior highlight, and he's in a high 80 number. You know what I mean? We gave him, gave him <laughs> flack as I went out there because I knew it. <laughs> you know, his senior year, he was in a single digit. <coughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. so you knew he wasn't the player that he wanted to be his junior, junior year. <laughs> but uh, <coughs> just uh, – it's what college sports is all about, yeah. right? Who, yeah. Who's the next one? And we need somebody to step up and be, you know, Cedric Tillman from last year. It's got to be this year, yeah. you know, and, and somebody step up. And that's the, the tough thing and the great thing about college sports. The NFL, you get to sign them to long-term deals. Mm-hmm. And yeah. They're there. Man, <clears throat> you don't have that luxury. And, and three, four years, they're gone. Um, his work habits is number one, right? And, and through his work habits, he gained confidence. And in confidence, he became more consistent and dynamic as a playmaker. And that's what led him to, to who he is today. And that's really kind of the journey that, you know, we've been talking about as a football team, right? There's teams that hope, teams that believe, and teams that expect to win. Got no shot if you're hoping. Got a chance to be average if you believe. Expectations got to come from within. It happens because of the way you work. And, and uh, our guys have – have started to work in a way where I think we'll expect to win next fall. What do you think you have in Brew McCoy at wide receiver? <clears throat> We're going to find out. Yeah. Um, you know, didn't have him on, on the field in, in spring ball. Uh, excited about him, the person, uh, who he is. You know, he's come in. Uh, he's tried to get to know the guys. Um, he's you know, gotten in the hip pocket of, of those wide receivers, learned what we're doing offensively. And he's going to have to grow extremely quickly during the course of training camp. Um, He's got to be ready to compete at a championship level early in, in the process. And we got great competition, slot position, the outside receiver uh, opposite of, of Cedric. Some guys below Cedric that uh, are trying to take playing time away from, yeah, from Ced. And, and that's how we can – that's how we are better. That's how we can get better is, is continuing to create competition at every single spot. Yeah. Other side of the ball, there's so much talk offensively because of what you guys do. But on the other side of the ball, you lose to NFL draft picks in the secondary. Um, defensively, what do you expect from that group? And, and what is an area that you're a little concerned with heading into the year? Uh, uh, you know, a year ago, uh, I didn't talk about it, but we were the thinnest team in America. Uh, so 69 thin. scholarship players. Uh, yeah. When we started training camp, we were thin. In particular, we're hit on the defensive side of the football. And – um, those guys never used it as an excuse. They strained, they fought, they competed, uh, they played hard. We didn't play as well as we're capable of. Um, <clears throat> I do think another year in the system, another year of uh, adding some competition and depth, a uh, year of understanding or straining through our off-season program, physically, mentally being able to handle the competition for three and a half, four hours, or four hours and 30 minutes if it's an Ole Miss game. <laughs> like all of those things, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, I think will help us. We got to get better third and long defense. We had people, yeah. not all the time, but we were in a lot of third and long situations. Yeah. just didn't get off the field. Yeah, <clears throat> That happens from secondary play, but it starts with everything up front. And we got to be able to affect the quarterback with a, a four-man rush. And, and I think we've developed in that way. Um, and we'll be better uh, there. Uh, and then we got to be better in the red zone. Give up three, don't give up seven. And uh, so in those ways, we got to get better. I know offensively you said, okay, this year, who's who's the Cedric Tillman, right? Defensively, you know, who's kind of the Theo Jackson that that can take that big step? Theo's a great story, right? Opportunity mm-hmm. and work habits meet and 
take advantage of him. Great story. Um, I think he'll play in that league for a long time, you know, and up until last year, hadn't done anything but play special teams. Uh, he took advantage of it. It's a guy that Trey Flowers has kind of emulated his off season after. And <clears throat> that's why Trey has made some of the, the gains that he has. Uh, we are deeper. There's competition at every spot. Secondary uh, safety spots, the nickel star spot, our corners, like there's real competition and it will be every play, every single day. Um, I think we'll play more guys on the defensive side of football than we did a year ago, which lends itself to us playing better too. Are you, you're still not 80 at uh, 85 scholarship. We're talking about depth. You're still not there, are you? We are not at 85. We are, we will be under, under that this fall. Crazy. Josh Heupel, Tennessee football coach. Coach, uh, last question for me. Can you, I, I'm going to have to get a little bit of, um, <laughs> a little bit better in shape and conditioning um, because <laughs> I'm, I'm out here looking at the games. And it's so fast, you know what I mean? I get out of breath watching. Can you get fast? It's fun, isn't it? No, <laughs> what? It is amazing. Do you hear me? I love it. I, I love every minute of it. You ought to see don't, me. Don't go grab a drink. No, because no, you're going to miss it. You're going to miss it. Uh, you should have saw me, man, in that Kentucky game. I was watching it at a bar. I was actually running laps around the bar. Like the, I would have liked to have seen that. Uh, the lady said she was going to put me out, and then I told her, you know what I mean? I'm the only Tennessee fan in here amongst all these Kentucky fans. So, you know what I mean? I love it. I, yeah, wait, I held wait, it down Kentucky, for Kentucky, is that what yeah, you that's, said? Yeah that's, yeah, that's the school. That's the name all of the right. school. Yeah, you know what I mean? But can y'all get faster than that? Uh, when we want to play faster, yes, we can be more efficient uh, yeah. in that. Um, and it's subtleties. Right. But the subtleties are what make a difference right. in, in what we do. Time and Hendon had an amazing season, obviously. Why did he not start the season? Yeah, because um, he didn't win the job in, in training camp. Um, you know, it was back and forth, neck and neck. You get, I don't know, two-thirds, three-quarters of the way through training camp, you're getting the back end of it. you got to make a decision. And part of the decision <clears throat> was, you know, how each of them were playing, but part of it was – Joe being a lot newer in the system, too. He didn't have any spring ball. And, and yeah, uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I love both of them. And we were open and had the conversation with everybody in the room uh, at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end. And uh, I think that's important. How Hendon handled the situation is why he became the player that he did, too. Uh, he became a much better player. I think in that process, <clears throat> him transferring in um, – trying to think of the right word there was a, a, a ton of internal pressure on himself yeah after that decision I do think he took a deep breath relaxed he came back the next day <clears throat> and had relaxed a little bit but had the same work ethic and and didn't change his demeanor and how he talked to the wideouts to the offense yeah. to the team any of that and because of that when his opportunity came he was much better than when we had made the decision he had grown and in a lot of ways, he was ready for the opportunity. He didn't play perfect against Pitt when he got his opportunity. We turned the ball over. Mm -hmm. But he handled every situation from the time that he's gotten here the right way. And he's constantly gotten better. Whether it was a positive outcome or a negative outcome, he's always gotten better from it. Well, and then Joe, like most guys, you lose a job in the offseason, you hit the portal, you're gone. I think it's a testament to, to, to – Hendon and how he handled what he handled, but also Joe and how he handled what he handled, right? Yeah, I, I think um, <clears throat> the culture that we've built in the quarterback room as an entire program speaks to, to why that happens. Um, Hendon's ability to handle a situation the way he did is a big part of it. Joe's maturity to understand, man, <clears throat> what, what we're doing offensively, his deficiencies are areas that he needs to grow in understanding that he has to grow like all of that plays into that being a really mature way of handling the the situation and what's unique that people don't understand they handled it well a year ago man those two guys are around each other more than any two guys in our building right now like they practice together they train together they're in the meetings doing extra work together they're on the football field doing extra stuff they're together outside of the game together there's a really good rapport and relationship that's, you know, as healthy as anything I've seen at that position. I, I'm going to be honest, I don't know if I could have handled it yeah. like that, you know. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's real. Josh Eiffel, Tennessee football coach. Coach, there's a, a pretty trophy sitting behind you. Um, <sighs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and I bring that up because <laughs> expectations, yeah. totally different, so high. Awesome, right? 
<laughs> it is. It, it is, yeah. yeah. But but how do you handle it internally? Yeah, a year ago, uh, we were very open. I had conversations, dialogue that, like, listen, all the outside noise, I don't care what social media platform, radio, TV, your mom and dad, your girlfriend, your dog, like, none of that matters. Nobody knows who we are and what we've done inside the building, how we've grown, and how we're preparing ourselves to go play at a much different level than people anticipate. <clears throat> the same is true this year. They don't know. Who cares? It doesn't matter what you say, what they say, positive or negative. Like, you got to reset. It's your work habits. It's how you approach every minute of every day inside the building. The expectations outside sure as heck ain't going to be any higher than they are inside of the right. building. And so let's go about it. Hope, belief, expect. you got to become a team that expects. That happens because of the way you work. Our kids have bought into that. We, are, we work in a different way, and we're accountable, but we work in a different way than we did a year ago. Josh Heupel, Tennessee football coach, September 1st, coming up before you know it. Thank you for the time. Always good to see you, my Great friend. seeing you guys. Appreciate right. it. Sir. Thanks, boom, boom, boom. More 3HL <laughs> coming up next on 104.5 The Zone.